Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. This week, we're looking over the five scriptures we talked about in this week's sermon that you can use to share the gospel biblically, just straight out of the word of God to the person who you're evangelizing. And we looked at John 3.16. Yesterday, we were, looked at, at Romans 3.23. Today, I want to talk about Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23 is yet another one of these single verses that encapsulates the gospel. If you want to see the larger context for this, I would encourage you go to, on, on if you're listening to this on audio, uh, subscribe to the Jesse Campbell Ministries YouTube channel and go find a library of sermons where I preach verse by verse through the book of Romans in a series titled, How Christians Are Made. In Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 15, we see Paul beginning to describe what it's like to live a new life in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come, that we share with Christ's burial and baptism. We share in his resurrection in baptism. It goes on in verse 15. We're going to get a running start into Romans 6, 23, one of the five verses that I want you to use in sharing the gospel. These are not, these are not the only five verses, but these are the five verses that I've used over the years, and I've seen God use it to bear fruit. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Absolutely not. Okay, you hear that? Christian hedonists, doesn't work like that. Don't you know that if you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one that you obey, either of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But thank God that although you used to be slaves of sin, you obeyed from the heart that pattern of teaching to which you were handed over. And having been set free from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. I'm using a human analogy because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you offered parts of yourselves as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater lawlessness, so now we offer them as slaves to righteousness, which results in sanctification. That's right, the word sanctification is not just a, not just a seminary word. It's in the Bible. It's important that everybody understand it. It's where we become more and more like Christ. He's describing how we used to be slaves to sin and just greater and greater lawlessness, but now we're slaves to righteousness. To be enslaved to Jesus is to be free. To refuse to submit to Jesus as Lord is to be enslaved to our sin nature. Sanctification is how we become more and more like Christ. He continues in verse 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free with regard to righteousness. So what fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of? The outcome of those things is death. All right, look back on the sum total, the outcome, the bottom line the result and the fruit of our past sin. Ultimately, just death. I, I look back on times in my life when I've made mistakes and I've sinned and I've fallen short of the glory of God and I've done stupid things. And you know what always comes of those things? Just bad stuff. I like the, the sum outcome, the, 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 the total fruit produced from the sin in my life is destruction. And ultimately, ultimately it's death. I mean, take all of our sin and just magnify it and just follow it to its logical conclusion. It's going to lead to death. All right? That's what Paul tells us to do. We look at our sin. What fruit was produced from the things you're now ashamed of? Okay, look back on it. What do you, what do you have to show for it? Ultimately, it was going to lead to your death. Verse 22, but now, since you have been set free from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit, which results in sanctification. And the outcome is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't the context for this verse absolutely amazing? If you've, if you've got the time for it, man, this would be another one of those beautiful passages sitting at the coffee shop across the table from them. Take them through Romans 6, 15 through 23, if you've got the time for it. But if you can tell that they're shutting the door on you and you only got like this much time and you got to be able to like slip a Bible verse through, Romans 6, 23 is one of those. It also includes, again, the wrath that God has for sin and the grace that God has for sinners. The wages of sin is death. That's true. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Also true. Not mutually exclusive quite a beautiful fusion one to the other, actually. We see the wrath that God has for sin and the grace that God has for sinners encapsulated in a single sentence. This is the larger context for Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the third of the five verses that I'm going to train you in as you share the gospel. And then as we talk about next week, 
turning those five verses into a prayer whereby someone can proclaim to God their faith in him as Lord. Make sure you press this verse to your own heart. Make sure you understand this wholeheartedly yourself before you invite somebody else into it. Know that the Holy Spirit is with you in all of this. This is an incredible text, isn't it? God's going to use it to change someone's life today. Are you ready? Go make disciples.